So in today's video, I wanna take a look at the Alaska. Much like we did yesterday, we looked at the Massachusetts. I think these are two of the very popular Black Friday ships. And to start off with, here's the commander that I like to use. I really enjoy the upgraded gun feeder and uh, grease the gears on these American commanders. I'm using Halsey, but I think the Doe Brother commanders also work. Um, survivability expert, again, we're trying to survive here. We're a tanky radar, so we'll probably try and push up. Uh, concealment, very good. Superintendent, you get extra heals, you get extra radars. It's just awesome. Adrenaline rush, and then I think the last thing I would go for is top grade gunner. These are the last four points I don't really know what to do with. Um, but that's the build. As far as equipment, it's also pretty standard on Alaska. Uh, reload on the main guns, concealment. I like propulsion mod here simply because we're often bow in on an island and having propulsion mod allows us to maneuver a little better around those rocks. Um, aiming systems, definitely a great option for a ship that has a long reload and can hit pretty hard with these main guns. Uh, so let's jump into the first game and see how it goes. So our first Alaska game, we get very lucky, I would say. Uh, tier nine, top tier. This is how it used to be before super ships all the time. Uh, no carrier as well, no submarine. Um, this is pretty much the best matchmaker I could possibly get. And we're on Greece. So that means we're gonna play very aggressive into some of these islands. I think we're just gonna rush to B. Uh, Alaska can play like this because it has really good concealment, decent armor, and of course, the closer we are to people, um, the better our AP gets. It's okay at range, but I tend to find the penetration isn't great at longer ranges, and dispersion can be a little wonky sometimes. We do have improved pen angles, so people can't really angle to us that well. Um, they have to be basically directly bow in. Otherwise, we're just going to get full pens in on them. So what I'm watching for, really, is uh, if we're pushing B this aggressively, we need to make sure we're not opening ourselves up to a bunch of cross shots here. Uh, that's gonna be the tricky part. Notice the DD on the our team is spawned at C. Sometimes they mirror the spawns, but um, sometimes they're reversed. It's unlikely the DD's in the middle though, which is nice for us. Um, our Hydro should cover it all though. The key here also, as I'm pushing up to this island, is I'm taking a bit of a wide approach because I'm thinking I'm gonna get spotted from here, and I wanna use this island here. Um, I'm taking a little bit of a wide approach so I can turn in. That's the idea here. I don't have to stay flat broadside. I can turn in and uh, angle reasonably well. Although it looks like the enemy team is just going over to uh, the one two line, um, or sorry, the nine ten line. They don't really have much here at A, it seems like, uh, but we'll see. The Provincian could be really annoying with airstrikes, certainly. <laughs> uh, but hopefully he doesn't uh, get a lock on us. Colorado over here. Yeah, looks like we're going to be very, very aggressive. Still have not been spotted, which is... Well, we got spotted by the Provincian briefly, but not permanently being lit here is kind of insane. That means there's nobody here to really support this Colorado. I'm not gonna push out too far though. We're gonna try and win this flank first to support it, and then we're gonna use this island to focus on the 9-10 lines. Uh, Colorado is probably going to die very quickly, I would say. I'm not getting too greedy yet for my uh, rear turrets. We have to watch that we don't get uh, cross-mapped from this uh, little gap here. That's gonna be the tricky part about a lot of islands in this game, they tend to have larger, larger sections and smaller sections. So if we play up here, it's going to be a little harder for them to uh, cross map us. Although they have a lot of brawling battleships, so it's not too big a worry. And uh, yeah, this Colorado is just running away. <laughs> I do not blame him at all. The Provincian is dropping an airstrike. I'm going to just nose out here and see what happens. Let's see what we get. Wavar, okay. We can do something about that. I should have waited until I was loaded, probably. The Provincian's probably gonna get a decent drop in on me here, but uh, we have heals. And bam, there you go. <laughs> uh huh. We, uh, we definitely enjoy Alaska guns.
He accelerated. Probably a poor shot finally. But we still get 6k, which is nice. Very, very nice. The Colorado has already died. <laughs> oh man, poor guy. Try and take the Waymar out. And maybe we start working on the prevention. Two torpedo protection hits. That's unfortunate. We're going to try and stop here to avoid this drop. Hmm. Not sure who I necessarily want to shoot at. Probably the way though. Definitely want to take him out. Again, we're trying to avoid the uh, cross maps here. There we go. That is... Uh, one cruiser dealt with. Again, something about the Alaska is sure you got armor and we can bully these lower tier cruisers like this. Uh, but keep in mind, I'm always getting ready to reverse behind cover here. We don't have fire prevention. That is something that feels really bad nowadays on the, uh, on the Alaska. I find that not having fire prevention is really, really unfortunate. Uh, used to have it. A lot of these uh, battle cruisers used to have it, and they were a lot tankier. And there we go, another Citadel. Feels pretty good. He's probably thinking about backing up. Okay, we're starting to see uh, the Alaska on the enemy team coming back. So, um, reverse behind cover. We used our damage control, heal up a bit here. Uh, try and take out this New Orleans, maybe? And uh, we gotta watch the cross maps here. So I'm actually gonna turn my guns to shoot these guys as they're coming through here. But I don't wanna get spotted, so I'm not gonna go too far back. Another Enemy Citadel. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, you know, with perfect matchmaker, Alaska looks pretty insane, as we can see here. Uh, I'm gonna be a little bit risky, because, yeah, we can get spotted and shot over this gap. Alaska does have a bit of an exposed Citadel, but it's. Like, it's not turtleback is what I mean, but it's very much waterline below waterline, so it's not uh, the easiest thing to hit. So I'm not too worried about getting this much broadside. And our AP should just tear up this Bismarck real quick here. I hope. Um, on Skoy. Team is not doing as well as I thought we would be, actually, <laughs> considering the starts. Uh, I do need to make sure I can potentially get away from here. Hmm, I'm not sure what I want to do. In front of me wants to push. Yeah, I think I push around this corner here. The Alaska is all about these little decisions here. What fights to take, what fights not to take. I think we take a fight with the enemy Alaska. Uh, because we have support and he's stuck bow in. Uh, that's really the idea here. Um, although he's kind of crushing our teammates by the looks of things. We don't want to go too far to expose ourselves even further to the enemy team. But the hope is we're going to get some support here. We're fairly even on HP. But the idea is that we should have more support than he does. And I'm just sticking to AP. Um, notice I'm not really using my HE all that much. Because we get decent pen angles. And we're going very much bow in, because we know what Alaska AP can do. It's kind of scary stuff. I'm aiming high up into his superstructure. I don't want to hit his uh, belt armor, although <laughs> struggling a little bit. Struggling a little bit. That's okay. Again, I'm trying to not take big damage from the Bismarck here. Ideally, hmm, it's probably the Sean Bart that's holding up the R team is my guess. I can't really help on that, unfortunately. Maybe we'll take a pot shot at the Provincian. Bismarck is so spooky. I need to remember that. Okay, I think it's HE time. We're going to use our expert loader to uh, get a little bit better shell type here. Yeah, we're in we're in a tough spot here. Very tough spot. Use our heal. I don't want to back out too far because of the Bismarck, right? But we're getting pressured here from the Dawn Spy. 
It hurts. It hurts. Alaska's coming around the corner. I have a friendly Alaska here? What are you doing, man? You're on full health. Okay, AP now. All right, he bounced. Is he going to help? I feel like I'm very dead to the uh, Alaska coming around the corner. Ow. This marks right there. I'm going too far back. I need that gun. Ow. Okay, he's dead. Um, I think we're dead, though. <laughs> <laughs> Not much we can do about it. I think we held pretty well. Uh, I think we just didn't have enough support from our team. And that's going to happen to you a lot in Alaska. People don't really give you much support. <laughs> so a decent result, even though uh, it did end in a defeat. Um, Alaska, eh, we were top of the team. <laughs> oh man, we did not really have a team in that one. Uh, let's try again. That was pretty much perfect matchmaker, though, for the Alaska. All right, another game and another blessed matchmaker. <laughs> We're very much top tier. One of the only tier nines in this match. So maybe I'm wrong in my uh, thought that everyone's playing super ships and tier nine is being pulled up. Or the matchmaker's compensating for the Massachusetts matchmaker yesterday. <laughs> Either way, I will take it. In an Alaska, uh, feels really nice. This map is quite fun for an Alaska because we can play quite aggressive using a lot of these middle islands, limiting crossfires, that kind of thing, and still get good value out of our radar and hope to uh, win this one. I think having a, yeah, our Baltimore going here somewhere, I'm going over here, we're going to do really good work. The idea, that this, this game at least, is to push up to this island here next to B and slowly work our way through, um, trying to deal with the A side of things first. Okay, we've been spotted. Um, we can't quite radar on spot, although notice I'm pushing far enough to get my radar into the cap circle. That's something we definitely want to be doing. So if the enemy team enters the cap, uh, we can do some good damage to them. Uh, I wish I had AP there. Should have, should have had AP still. Uh, we might have pushed a little too aggressive. Certainly, that's possible. Seven thousand damage from that uh, HE hit feels pretty good. They are in the cap now, so we are going to radar. I am not sure what this Fletcher is really thinking. We're also going to use our Hydro. And we just missed a Fletcher that's stationary. <laughs> uh, dispersion's fun, isn't it? Very fun. He's trying to get around the corner. So we will hopefully do some damage as he sneaks back. All right, we got one hit for that whole radar. Feels bad, man. So what I'm doing here also is that I'm trying to use the uh, propulsion mod to limit the number of people that are actually able to hit me, right? So they're kind of missing a lot because we're just bouncing back and forth here. We're going to probably not do much to that Helena since uh, he's turning out. Now, something we could do is try and go dark here. I think that's a reasonable to thing to try. We're on fire, so the Helena will still be spotting us. But I'm gonna wait until um, until our you know detection. Twenty. Oh, he got the insta fire. Insta double. Okay. Okay. So no fire prevention and getting crushed by RNG. Okay. <laughs> I think I, I'm playing too aggressive, um, but at the same time, that is insane RNG that that, uh, I think Baltimore just got on us, which feels really, really bad. The idea behind um, what I was doing earlier, um, waiting to damage control, the double fire, was I was waiting for my detection timer to reset, all right? So that means that... You know, when I rep the fire, my detection goes back to normal, and I get unspotted, and then people can, can't can hit me anymore. That's that's the whole idea, right? Uh, unfortunately for me, <laughs> it didn't really work out. It didn't really work out. And um, it appears, though, that the enemy team is mostly on this flank, though. So 
me playing aggressive and losing all my HP like this, while a very silly move, um, is hopefully going to win us this game, since I have such an insane crossfire here, and I'm still able to use this island to uh, give me some cover here. The key also is that they don't have any presence up here, right? I'm not getting cross shot through here. That's what's allowing me to actually uh, do some good damage without really taking that much in return. Otherwise, you know, a battleship would love to find me here. <laughs> Very much so. Uh, let me use my heal. Long range shot into the Eden. Did I lead enough? No, not quite, it looks like. Floaty shells. Very floaty shells here. I don't really want to push out for this Fletcher. I'm hoping my team can get him. If he goes unspotted, I will be uh, using the radar, though. Okay, there we go. Nice little uh, nice little citadel in on the edit. Yeah, so most of their team is in this corner. So, you know, trying to uh, deal with them as they push in. Overpans didn't quite lead enough again. Uh, a little farther. Yeah, let's go there. Although he's turning out, so those probably land short. It's one of the big issues with using an AP focus ship. Um, yep, they land short. Is that the aiming system only really predicts that uh, people are going to head in a straight line. See these torps? He's going to turn in for them. Um, they, it only really is capable of predicting that. And uh, since there's a lot of auto aiming going on, Anytime someone changes direction after you shoot, your shells are more than likely not going to hit. Um, which is unfortunate for a ship like Alaska. You know, I'm thinking about trying to uh, hit this Baltimore as he pushes, but I don't really want to push out too far for it. 5k bow in edit, not bad. Now we should have a reasonable salvo in on the Baltimore. We have double bolt in our here. Yikes. Definitely need to deal with those. We'll use our next heal. Got a citadel. Feels pretty good. This one is basically stationary. Is he going to reverse? Yes. He's reversing, so we'll go after him. Um, the thing to watch out for is the rook potentially pushing here. Looks like our team is winning the sea flank, which is amazing. Uh, we're getting some awful dispersion, but at least, hey, we're getting some citadels out of it. All right, max range almost for this Baltimore. And we're on decent HP still, but only one heal remaining. So I'm trying to save that heal for, uh, for the late game. That's something I definitely... I don't want to give up so much HP that I can't make a play late in the game. Uh, that's often how you win or lose games. Uh, Baltimore slowed down by the looks of it. Ah, uh, he's too far. Who is in A? It's the Eden is in A. Interesting. We will go after him. Maybe we can land our rear turret here. Not quite. Is the Colorado shooting us? No. This Baltimore is. Okay, starting to get focused again. So back up, back up. Before it uh, hurts too much. Early, that was too early damage gone. Uh, this Baltimore, if he gets good RNG, will light me on fire again. Which is uh, exactly what happens. Uh, feels bad. I, you know, it was a mistake, but it does feel like uh, the game is always looking for a hard punish. <laughs> oh, man. The matchmaker is very good, though. Uh, I should not be complaining too much because it could get much worse playing in Alaska. We're facing Baltimore's Bismarck's, right? Like... We're not going after, you know, Satsumas and Annapolis's, for example. It could be, things can get worse. Things can get a lot worse. I pushed out too far. I let the Eden spot me again, uh, which was dumb. Probably take even more damage because of that. Uh, it's really too bad we don't have a, our DD here to spot things for us. Um, would really love that. 
And I hope the Bismarck doesn't get a nasty Citadel or something into us. Wow, landed short. Lucky, lucky me. There was a Helena backed in. Interesting. Very interesting. Since the sh shells are quite floaty, we can always look for shots over islands. Uh, you just look at the uh, mountain terrain indicator and see if you can get over an island. It's always a good thing to check for. This rook should die, so I'm not too worried about him. Uh, Colorado? Yeah, let's go Colorado. Unless, unless there's a better target that prevent, presents itself. I hope my front guns can get over. Only one front gun, unfortunate. Still though. Oh, team got a good hit. <laughs> Single over pen. Come on. Surely. Surely this time, right? Okay, we got our front guns over. I am spotted again, so I need to reverse. Okay, we got him. Again, this is why I love Propulsion Mod. It allows me to maneuver like this. Um, how is the Richelieu still alive here? Okay. Um, spooky, th spooky stuff. We're going to reverse back into B here, I guess. I should have been uh, paying attention to the map much more. I would have seen that and uh, been much more okay, I think. Uh, but we're still we're still fine. Just reverse into uh, cover from the Richelieu, and we'll be all right. Hoping to get at least something through. One gun, one shell. The dream. Imagine. Oh, it went short. Too bad. <laughs> Oh, man. But see, Alaska against its own tier, and especially against lower tiers, is a lot of this kind of play. Where you're looking to abuse islands, you're looking to get cross shots, you're looking to use your radar uh, in an aggressive manner. And abusing the fact that you are much tankier than most cruisers at your tier with radars. And uh, basically giving you those uh, broadsides. Uh, I will shoot this guy because he is healing. Um, the Helena could be coming around this corner, so we'll wait for that. Uh, looks like he's pretty slow, though. Not coming around too quickly. So we could go attempt to deal with the Richelieu. The nice thing, I haven't really talked about Alaska armor. I just keep saying it's reasonably tanky. Uh, the, the thing is, um, your bow is 27 millimeters, which means a ship like Richelieu with 380 millimeter guns cannot overmatch it. So effectively, we're a battleship against him. It's not a very fair fight then. <laughs> uh, but it's quite handy in these lower tiers. Against higher tiers, the only armor you have that can bounce anything is your lower belt. Uh, your upper belt is 28, I believe. Uh, it's really not amazing. Um, and gets overmatched very easily as well. Your lower belt is good, but uh, you can't guarantee people hit that. And then the deck armor, I believe, is 38? Something like that. We can check in port. But the key to uh, the key with the uh, deck armor is you got to be perfectly bow in or stern in at pretty far range. Otherwise, people are just going to hit your bow or your upper belt. We'll use this radar to figure out where he's going. Looks like he grounded and is trying to reverse. So we'll just try and flank around him. All right, Alaska being quick has allowed us to flank around and uh, hopefully get a decent salvo in here. Uh, six overpens feels kind of bad. You might be wondering, why didn't you shoot lower? The idea between by shooting higher there is that we don't hit his belt armor. French battleships have what's known as turtleback. And the French turtleback is a really weird one because there's a huge gap between the actual outer part of the armor and where the turtle back starts. And that's where you get just a ton of torpedo protection hit, zero damage. Um, it's quite frustrating. So I just didn't trust the Alaska uh, to actually do any damage there. So I was hoping upper belt, um, the 32 millimeter stuff, I was hoping the Richelieu was wide enough that it would pen, but uh, it did not arm. 104,000 damage, three kills, not bad. Fireproof, yeah, that's that's uh, that's an achievement that we can get sometimes. No fire prevention, definitely uh, definitely hurts here. 
Okay, our third match, we got up against tier 10s this time, so uh, this is also some standard matchmaker that we'll see. We do have carriers in this one, so playing Bowin on an island is not going to be uh, the play we want to make. The reason being, uh, AA does not go through islands, which seems obvious, but it used to be that AA would go through islands in the game. So you could actually sit on an island and be relatively safe. Now it actually provides cover for the enemy planes, and uh, looks like the enemy CV is over here. Our Benson has not loaded in. Uh, we see the GK up north here. So given that the CV is here, um, and our Benson is not loaded in, we are definitely uh, gonna play very passive here. It's really unfortunate he got the fire. I think I can rep, and he won't be back in time to relight me. Uh, but we're going to play very passive here. So very, very different play style that you're about to see than what we did in the last two games, which is good. Uh, I don't want to just show you times where we can be aggressive and get away with it. I want to show you guys what we can do here as the flank hold kind of ship. Um, ideally, the Chikalov doesn't just go after me. Um, considering, you know... Out of everyone on the team, I probably have the best AA. <laughs> so, you know, it wouldn't make too much sense. But, uh, hey, here we are. World of Warships, man. Marlboro, it's a little spooky. Uh, this is going to hurt, I think. Chikala B, perhaps he just bought it. Um, okay. <laughs> I'll allow it, I guess. I will allow it. Uh, so yeah, I'm playing very, very far back. Um, Petro is not a ship I want to be fighting, really, at range like this. Because his shell velocity is just going to kill me. He also has improved pen angles, so it's not like I can really angle... Um, if I'm shooting my guns kind of over my shoulder or whatever, the angle that I have to take is too... Uh, too open that a Petro is just going to get a ton of full pens in me, so I don't really want to take that engagement. Especially since he's bow in and able to, uh, well, angle to all of my salvos reasonably well. Perugamo gets spotted. We swap to the HE to try and farm the Petro, but hey, this is giving us an opportunity to hit the DD. One hit. That's good aim. I think the problem here was uh, dispersion a little bit. I am willing to push Bow in here a little bit with the, you know, knowledge that the Marlboro is flanking us that we got to be a little careful of. Because we do have a Gina in here, a Turpitz. Um, we definitely want to, if we can, deal with this Hergamo. Our Benson's back in the game, which it feels pretty good. We're Bow on to the Skip Bombers, which is ideal. Um, and we're going to hit a radar because I thought I could catch him. And we did. Nice. I'm also going to Hydro because... Oh, uh, looks like I missed that one. I'm Hydroing simply due to... Uh, well, the Hergamo turning out like that. It's pretty easy to tell that a DD has uh, sent Torps at you. So Hergamo is going to get away by the looks of things. Um, this Benson Smoke is very interesting. I think what this Benson Smoke... I don't know what this Benson Smoke means, actually. I think it means we take it as a... Uh, Harugamo gets a first hit fire. That's pretty good. Uh, I think that means we take it as a way to turn around. Because we're too pushed in here. Petro's pushing, which probably means that there's a radar coming. So I'm actually going to uh, very aggressively leave this smoke. And this is going to look really dumb, because we're going to take a lot of damage here. But what it's allowing me to do is get out before the Petro just radars us for free. And we're going to kite, 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 kite away. The farther we get away, the less effective Harugamo is going to be. We're angled to Petro. We're angled to Aegir. The CV has uh, a lot to go through to get to us, I would say, at the moment. So I think that was a good uh, use. Um, I should probably, I'll 
remind me to compliment the uh this carrier um might know me um <laughs> this level of focus is uh kind of insane i would say given that there's a turpitz all on his own um i i wouldn't normally say this is uh you know youtube guy getting focused but look at this turpitz man turpitz has some of the worst possible aa at its tier um all on his own Nothing going on, and yet you're going through to the Jinan and the Alaska to strike the Alaska guy? Somewhat suspicious, I would say. Uh, I don't want to call uh, Stream Sniper focused, you know, all every game, because obviously it's not going to be every game, but this is pretty blatant. Uh, but, you know, look at, hey, we got 1.1 million potential damage. It's kind of hard to see, but it is there. And we got three heals left, so we've been doing a pretty good job of, uh... He's flying right through the fighter! Hello? Okay. So, unfortunately for us, um... Yeah, we're getting focused by the carrier, and Alaska AA, well, decent. It's surface ship AA in 2022. You're not going to be stopping anyone strikes ever. Um, the idea behind the carrier rework is obviously to uh, make AA a bit, a bit of a pretty light show for the uh, carrier player to dance around. So unfortunate, unfortunate. But hey, we're doing reasonably well still. We're kind of holding our own. Uh, unfortunately for us, we're losing the north flank. Um, yeah, so we're probably just going to lose this game. So even though the carrier really hasn't done too much damage to me, he's really just locking me out of the impact of the game all that much. So even though he's... You know, this is what I really, really, really dislike about carriers and the way they're designed. Subs too, to a certain extent. Is that they're just going to focus on one player and ruin their match. And that is all that they are typically going to do. They're not going to have huge battle impact, but they will make one player's game miserable. Um, and unfortunately, that's what we get this match. I'm trying to flank this Petro a little bit. Uh, Harigmo is spotted. He's outside of radar range at the moment. Um, yeah, I think we're okay to push here. Decent hit in on the Harigamo. Feels pretty good. He's forced to smoke. I'm going to be pushing aggressively for the radar here. I will take that blind shot. Okay. Doing okay here. I'm slowing down and turning into these bombers. Hopefully to avoid some of the damage. Did okay avoiding some of the damage. Our radar is used on this Harugamo to hopefully kill him. Um, you know, you don't always have to get the damage out of your radar. You know, we're pushing forward as the tanky radar to just get spotting on this DD. We have a Benson. We have a Jinan. We have a Lightning. Uh, he's forced out. And he died. Good. Very, very, very good. So I'm not going to actually push into the ACAP. Um, all I wanted to do was get the DD killed. I want to push, I think, through this gap here. I think that's going to be the play. Okay. Um, you know, eventually the 3D printer will overheat and it'll be out of planes, I hope. <laughs> oh, man. Pretty, uh, pretty annoying. Maybe he hasn't actually moved. That would be kind of funny. Maybe we could catch him. With the Petro pushing... Oh, he is here. Nice. Uh, with the Petro pushing, uh, I feel okay with uh, moving in here. We do have to deal with the egg here first. Okay, circle drop pattern on Chikalov. Fortunately, this guy is new to Chikalov, so um, he's using the absolute worst planes he possibly could against me. And Aegir has Torps, so we do want to be aware of that if uh, he gets closer to us. Okay, uh, looks like we're in a bit of a rough spot. 
Make sure we direct our AA here. Good. 14k in on the... Uh... You are looking at me! What the hell? What the hell is wrong with these people, bro? Okay, now we just gotta hope that... Uh... We just gotta hope that no citadels. Nice. Lucky us. And I hope we reload our front guns. I think we get them. Yep. And can we turn into the torps in time, I hope? And now we try and deal with the Trikalov, finally. Unfortunately for us, uh, I think we're eating two. I'm radaring to just make sure there's no one like super duper close to me. Okay. Yeah, we're starting to see the uh, C flank that fell. Um, unfortunate that they weren't able to hold a little longer or something. Especially given they didn't have any carrier health this whole game. Oh, yes. There we go. Finally got our Citadel. Oh, I'm actually eating that. I think. Poor job dodging. Yeah. Too bad. I think we're dead. Try and take the CV out. Maybe we can uh, get some blind shots in. We did get a blind shot. Um, a couple solved, blind sir. shots, even. Let's go here. Let's see if that works. Okay, 138. Um, blind drop looks pretty decent. No fire, though, which feels pretty good. So yeah, um, Alaska is a very strong ship. Um, it's it's one that I do like, but man, games like this, huh? Okay, I'm probably gonna die here, but I think our chance is that uh, we gotta help our DDs not die here as they get pushed by AGK. I think we do end up dying though, unfortunately. But I think it'll be the right play in the end. Although we lost our carrier, which feels pretty bad. Uh, NC is probably shooting us, yeah. 8k into German superstructures. We like those. It's likely the uh, curve first is going to go broadside to get a shot in. So we're going to stay bow in, like I mentioned. We do want to uh, try and use our deck armor as much as we can. Our reload's pretty insane. The ship, uh, ship is very strong. I'm just gonna use my radar. I don't know if it's gonna catch anything, but I'm going to use it. Hopefully before we die. I think the torps get him. Nice. Ah, the GK got his salvo off. Too bad. Uh, but I guess we'll see if we win this one. Um pretty insane match um not fun though insane match but i would not call that fun unfortunately for us uh this was not enough to win this game um yeah I, are we are we top score both teams even though we lost that's very frustrating <laughs> and we took the whole cv focus too man 
that's kind of the uh, a really good Alaska game. It shows the strengths of the Alaska very, very well. Although it also shows the uh, absolute frustration that I have while playing this game sometimes. Carriers, I really, really, really dislike how they're designed. I do need to compliment our two DDs, like I said. Uh, compliment, compliment. I debate not because they just pushed into a hydro battleship and died at the end, but hey, <laughs> still, they did help me with those smokes. I do appreciate it. And that's going to be it. Um, let's take a look at this armor layout real quick just to show you. Um, 36 here by the looks of things. So enough to uh, uh, bounce most battleship shells. Actually, all battleship shells. Not even Satsuma can overmatch that. Uh, again, 28 here, 27 here. So lots of overmatch earlier on, um, especially if you're close range, right? The GK overmatched my bow. So that's how he killed me there. Whereas if we were a little farther away, the shells would come in at an angle like this, a little more likely to hit that deck armor. So Alaska, quite tanky, quite fun. It's a great radar ship with some team support or division support. It's absolutely filthy what a good Alaska can do. Uh, so I definitely recommend this ship, although it is still quite expensive, even uh, on the Black Friday sale. So some of those tier eights look a little bit like a better deal, like the uh, Massachusetts, for example. Uh, and the mines as well. We might take a look at the mines uh, later this week. So thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.